Okay, continuing our five one notes. Uh, what's the? How many terms do we have here? We got one term. Okay, so which of the terms is one term? Binomial, trinomial, monomial, polynomial. Monomial. What type of monomial is this? It is a constant. Two is not going to ever, 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 ever change. If it was linear, what would it be? How could we change this to make it linear? What could we do to make it a linear monomial? If I added x squared, okay, if I made it 2x squared, it would no longer be linear, it would be quadratic. That would be a quadratic monomial. So what would be a linear monomial? Yes. 2x. Okay, so those are examples of linear monomials or quadratic monomials. This one, plain old 2, is a constant monomial. Okay, and as a reminder, I'm going to make up a question over here on the side for you guys. Um, suppose I give you this polynomial randomly here. Um, let's go uh, negative um, 3x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 7x plus 1. Okay, so I just made up a polynomial randomly out of thin air. Um, find the end behavior. Find the end behavior. Okay. Find the end behavior. First determine if this is in standard form. If it's in standard form, find the leading coefficient and the degree. That's what just made up this. You need to have it written down somewhere. Find the leading coefficient and the degree and make a decision on the whole. Up, down. Always find the right end behavior first and the left end behavior second. Which term out of those four would you really need to pay attention to? That one right there is the one. So do me a favor and circle that term because that's the one that's the most important. Now, out of that term, what's the leading coefficient? Leading coefficient is negative three. Good. What's the degree? Four. Okay. So use the leading coefficient to find the right end behavior first. Do you remember which one is the important term here? This one right here. Okay. Find the leading coefficient. Find the leading coefficient and the degree. That'll help me answer the question. Let's see if. Like you're right. <laughs> Side and I have said this in class, negative 3, and that tells me that the right-end behavior is, 
everybody has told me down, and that's why I write that, so that you know that the negative three is telling me the right end behavior. Okay? If we know the leading coefficient is negative three, that tells me the right end behavior is down. What does the even degree tell me? That it's the same as the right. Okay? We are definitely down with this polynomial. <laughs> Somebody's paying attention. Okay. The only part of question 11 I want you to look at is this picture. And I want you to tell me if you think the leading coefficient is positive or negative. Look at this picture and tell me whether you think the leading coefficient is positive or negative. You can't tell me what number it is, but you can definitely tell me what you think the line is. Okay, so answer is negative, right? Several of you have told me that. What is the reason that the answer is negative? Because it is down on the right in behavior. Okay. I was only paying attention to the right in behavior to answer that question. That was a joke. Well, I didn't get that one. All right, so let's save those notes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what kind of joke is this? The left side? Okay, over to your 5-2 notes. Over to your 5-2 notes in the packet. First page of the packet, question five. Question five, first page of the packet. Okay, we've done this with quadratics. Now I'm asking you to go one step further. I've added another term. It's not that big a deal. If you know that the factor is x plus 1, what zero do you get from that? That's exactly right. You set the factor equal to 0 and you solve. It's negative 1. Now, if I asked you for if I gave you the 0, could you go backwards and find the factor? Would that be a hard thing for you to do? Okay, good, because I'm going to ask you that in a few minutes. Yes. Okay, what about x minus 5? What do you get from that? Positive 5, and how about from x minus 7? So it shouldn't be that hard to get the zeros of the function. Okay. Now, I would like the leading term of this. I know this question doesn't ask that, but I'm going to ask it right now. I want the leading term. I'm going to show you a shortcut on finding that leading term. It's not really a shortcut, but the point is, I don't want to foil all that stuff out if I only want the leading term. What do we use the leading term for? What do we use it for? To find the end behavior. Thank you very much. So, here's my shortcut. X times x times x. My leading term is found by taking the first of every single factor and multiplying them together. What do you get? x cubed. Okay, folks. 
if you know that's the leading term, make your decision up, down, and all that good stuff. Make your decision. Look at your leading coefficient. Look at your degrees. Make your choice. Okay, positive one on my leading coefficient means that my right end behavior is right end behavior is up. Odd degree means my left is opposite, which would be down. Okay, just thought I would see how we're doing on that. We're going to skip six and come back to it. I need you to move to question seven. What are the zeros that you see in question seven? Is that correct? Is negative three, five, and six? Okay, just because you agree with yourself, we need other people. That is true. What's my leading term? That's right. X times X times X is X cubed. What's my end behavior? Positive 1 means my right end behavior is up. Odd degree means my left is down. Say it again. Okay. Uh, how did I get negative what? No, this is a positive one. Okay. But since that's a that positive number in front, that causes the right end behavior to go up. Okay. Um just like we talked about yesterday. Remember that? Okay. So 
then my odd degree tells me that the left has to be opposite of the right. So it's really important that I know what this is. Otherwise, I'm never going to know what opposite is. Okay. Which two answers have the wrong end behavior? A and C. You should have. You should look at. Be able to look at that and say, okay, they don't even have the right end behavior. I can't choose those. Cross them off for me. That way, I know. Hey, this kid is using their end behavior to get rid of choices. Even if you pick the wrong one now. I've had two classes so far, and the first thing out of their mouth, out of the choices B and D, has been the wrong answer. Let's see if you're better. What do we got? B, final answer. Well, according to choice B, which is the same thing the other two classes chose, it has two negatives and one positive. Do we have two negative zeros and one positive? No, we don't. We have two positives and one negative. Remember, they have to go through at negative 3, positive 5, and positive 6, according to what you told me. I, it's curious to me that all three classes fit on that. Okay, well, checking their phone. Uh -huh. Yeah, we see you. All right, now, question eight. A few minutes ago, you told me that if you were given a zero, you could come up with a factor. So what is the factor that goes, uh, be more specific, x minus one, is that what you meant? Then you are correct. Okay, good. So far, we're looking good, but why is this the wrong answer? Look at the question. Why is this the wrong answer? I got all the zeros. I got all the factors. Nope. Every one of those has y equals. They call it f of x, but it's all y equals. What, is the, what do the instructions say? Oh, standard form. And this is factored form. Oh, they want me to put it in standard form. Oh, that means I'm going to have to. So do you see why I'm crossing off D and E right away? Standard form. Tell me what else you know about standard form. Cross off A and F. Why? I agree with you totally, but why? Ah, decreasing order of exponents. That gets rid of those two choices. So we are really talking about a multiple choice question with literally only two possible answers. Now, what I would like you to do is I would like you to use your favorite method of multiplication. I don't care if you draw arrows. I don't care if you like boxes. I, I'll actually show you both. But I want you to start with those two right there and multiply them together. So if you don't like boxes, don't use them. Tell me what you get when you multiply those together. Then don't use them. Draw arrows. Draw arrows. I mean, I am not opposed to other methods. I just, I would just want to make sure it works for you. I mean, if you hate boxes because you deal with them at work all the time, I understand because you might not like them. Do they come in boxes? Okay. Car parts do sometimes. I'll show you a different way if you don't, I mean, if you don't have a good one already. Um, all I'm doing is I, I take one of them and I put it along the side and then I, I literally match them up x times x, x times 3, <laughs> x times negative 1, 3 times negative 1, and I, I literally just kind of column and row match them together and fill them in.
Uh, I'm sure. Or I'll show you two different ways, but um, so I put it underneath one of them, and so you see how this becomes the headings of the column. And then I take the one and I multiply it by and put it down the side. So I'm literally matching up next time this is Next time it's negative one. Four. Negative one times two. And now I look for any like terms that I can have. So that's three X and I take away one X. That's what we do. If you want to continue the process, my suggestion is that you want to leave the long one. Yes. Uh, I have. I've seen it done many ways. I've seen it done at like elementary school. Okay. Um, I'll be happy to look at whatever way you do. Do it like, like they do in elementary school. No, I know what you're getting at, and I'm going to show them that. But I'm going to show them that there's, there's a faster way to keep the sign between the two. But what I'm trying to do right now is refresh it. But you're right, in this question, I don't necessarily need that. Okay, so for those of you who like boxes, or I don't care if you draw arrows, your final answer should look like that. Now, I'm going to walk you through uh, another version of doing that, especially the part at the bottom, the quadratic times the linear factor. And I got I to gotta quickly move through this because I want to show you something else as well. Okay, so let me... Uh, this has all been recorded, so you can go back and watch it anytime you want to. Okay, so let's suppose you don't like the box. Let's suppose you'd like to do things the way we did things in elementary school. All right, you got a quadratic, you got a linear factor. Please pay attention. Four times negative three. Anybody got four times negative three? Negative 12. Four times 2x. Four times x squared. Okay, now literally this is another version of the exact same thing. Okay x times negative 3. Notice how in elementary school we scooted over and put everything in like columns. We left a blank spot on the right. We put a 0 in there. x times 2x, 2x squared, x times x squared, x cubed. And then we would add down the columns, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 5x minus 12. Now, that's a nice trip down memory lane for us. We do need those skills. Um, Ms. Brooks was observant in this question, and she saw something that, we, that made this question a whole lot easier. You didn't necessarily need to do all this work. If you did this one thing, please pay attention. Negative 1 times 3 times 4. What is negative 1 times 3 times 4? That is negative 12, isn't it? Would you be able to make a decision based upon what you see at the end right there? So that's what she decided to do, and that is, that is the easiest way to do that question. I wanted to refresh your skills on multiplication, which is why I made you do more work 
obviously you would not need to because you're right. You would just be able to do the lasts and get through that quickly. Question? It does work all the time. Um, now, we're going.